Keaton just hit a 58 mile an hour serve. And Drew just hit a 65 mile an hour serve. If you wanna be able to do the same, you're in the right place. Cause today we're gonna to talk all about how to get more power and more spin while serving. Throughout this process, I'm gonna take you through five of my best tips that I stole from the pros. So if you watch the best players, they're definitely doing all these things, which is why they serve so hard. Let me tell you, if you can implement these things into your game, you'll immediately notice that you get more power and more spin. But before I get into it, if you're new to the channel and this is your first video, please consider subscribing. We release a new video just like this every single week and we always cover topics that will actually help you win more games. Before we get into our main tips though, let's talk about what an advanced serve looks like. So an advanced serve comes from the whole body, not just the arm. So when we watch Keaton hit an advanced serve, you'll notice that there's rotation from his upper body, from his hips, and that carries into his arm, which is why he gets so much power. You'll also notice that when he hits the serve, he's hitting it off to the side of his body. So I'm gonna show you exactly where you wanna make contact with your serve later, but no, a beginner serve or a low level player generally is hitting a serve more like this, closer to their body where they're using a little bit too much arm. So there I'm really arming it and I can still get a decent amount of power, but if you wanna get to that 50, 60 mile an hour range, you really need to be using your whole body strength to get there. So today, all my tips are gonna be geared to take you from this serve to this serve. And I guarantee you at least one of these things is going to help you big time. The first tip is that to get the most power, you need to hit the ball in the right zone. So this is the power zone right here, not this out to the side of your body. This is the sweet spot of your paddle. In order to get the most power, you need to make the sweet spot and the power zone connect. This comes from having a consistent toss that you get into this area. So if you watch Keaton serve, you'll notice that he can make contact with the ball in the power zone on the sweet spot every single time. And the reason that he can do that is because his toss is consistent. So if you wanna make this happen on your own serve, you need to ensure that your toss is consistent. And the technique that I generally teach players to do that is either A, the downward facing hand, where I essentially just drop the ball straight into my paddle, or the mini toss, which if you're coming from tennis, you can probably already do this, where I do a little bit of a tiny toss where I get it in that same spot. What you don't wanna do is a big toss where there's a ton of variety and you're hitting the ball out of your strike zone, that's how you kill your power. So if you watch Keaton, when he misses the power zone, he loses almost all the power on his serve. It probably went down to like 30 miles an hour there. It also increases the chances that he's gonna miss. So before we get into any of these other tips, you need to make sure you're consistent with your toss because that's the foundation of having consistent power on your serve. You guys, if you wanna get a paddle that has a bigger sweet spot, check out our paddle, the Sweet Spot Pro. The sweet spot on this thing is massive. And if you head to our site and use code SERVE, you actually can get $20 off your order. And the next tip that you absolutely need to know to get more power on your serve is called the flashlight technique or wrist lag as I call it sometimes. And all that means is that when you're accelerating towards the ball on your serve, your wrist should lag behind. So you need to have a loose arm to make this happen. So when I'm going towards the ball, I actually want my butt cap, the bottom of my paddle, to be facing forward as if I was pointing a flashlight in front of me. So if my butt cap was a flashlight, the light should be shining in front of me as I'm accelerating towards my serve. And then once you get to hit the ball, the paddle face plows through. And that's where a lot of your power comes from. So if I'm just serve with a solid wrist like this, I can't hit it very hard at all. But when I get that flashlight wrist lag, that's when I start to get 40, 50, 60 mile an hour. So to get a better idea of what this technique looks like, I wanna show you two slow motion examples. So to recap, you wanna get that butt cap forward when your paddle starts to move forward. So if you're doing a loop, you don't need to have that position until you get into your acceleration slot, which essentially means where you start your swings forward momentum from. So for most players, it's about right here. They flip it back like this, and that's where a lot of that momentum comes from. And guys, this technique is also super important for the spin technique I'm gonna show you later, so stay tuned. And one thing that's really gonna help you with the flashlight technique is my third tip, which is that you should be holding the paddle extremely loose, especially in this section of your swing, because this is where your momentum comes from. So what I like to tell my players and my students is that you should be holding your paddle on your take back and your acceleration at about a two out of 10 in terms of tension. So in this section of my swing, I'm barely even holding my paddle. When I'm about to hit the ball, I'm gonna squeeze a little bit tighter to give my paddle that stability that it needs. But here is where your momentum comes from, so that's where you need to be nice and loose. And a cool way to practice this, which I did in one of my previous videos, is to literally just throw your paddle. So be careful, don't hurt anybody, and don't throw your paddle into a glass window or anything. But if you have a big field or something you can throw your paddle into, it's a good way to get that loose tension, because you'll see if you're tight, you can't throw your paddle very far. 
and you cannot hit the ball very hard. So this section of the swing really needs to be nice and loose and then give it that little extra squeeze right when you're about to hit the ball. That's how you get the most possible power. And the next thing that you really need to know to get more power has to do with rotation. So I want you to think for a second. Imagine you're a soccer goalie or a discus thrower and you need to throw your object as far as you possibly can. You're gonna take a huge backswing and use the rotation of your body to get it to go as far as you possibly can. You're not gonna arm it like this. You could throw something way farther if you get your body weight into it and your rotation into it. So there's two ways to think about this on an actual serve. One, and the more common version for rec level players, is closed stance, where I'm sideways to the court. Here, I turn my shoulders back a little bit and I get my hips to lead my rotation through the ball. So a closed stance serve, I can get a good amount of rotation and I sort of do a golf swing type footwork with my back foot. The other version, which is more popular amongst pro players, is open stance, where I'm starting more open to the court, and I lunge into my rotation, and then I spring out of it when I hit the ball. So you see players like Tyson McGuffin using this, and I think it's more of a personal preference thing. I think if you can get the open stance down, you can maybe get a little bit more power, but the main thing is that you're consistent with it. So I'd try both to see what you like more. Odds are you're probably gonna prefer this stance, but give open stance a shot too and see if you like it. Now though, I wanna show you a quick slow motion example of each technique. So here's close stance. And here's an example of what open stance looks like. This video is sponsored by playpickleball.com, which is a great place to get tons of information about the sport, coaching, where to play, and a bunch of other cool stuff. Our next step though is in regards to spin, and it has to do with the flashlight technique that I talked about earlier. So to get top spin on your serve, which is by far the most common spin that you see pros using, all you need to do is get below the ball when you hit it in your contact zone, and then finish slightly above it. But there's a few little tricks that you can pull to get even more. So the first is with the flashlight technique. So with my flashlight, I said you should be pointing the flashlight forward. But what you can also do is dip your paddle down a little bit more because as you're going through the ball with that technique, you can essentially windshield wiper up. So this is called the windshield wiper and a lot of people call it the brush. And when I get my paddle to dip down a little bit, I can bring it up when I'm hitting the ball. So in slow motion, and this little motion gives you a lot more topspin. So part of your topspin is gonna to be coming from lifting your arm up, but that little wrist flick gives you that little bit of extra spin for that explosive bounce. So when you're lagging your wrist, try to point your paddle down a little bit and then accelerate up through the ball. You don't wanna fully go over like you would in tennis, just like this. So very slight movement that gives it that little extra kick. And as a reminder, why topspin is so important is not just because it makes the ball accelerate off the bounce, but you can hit harder when you use topspin because it makes the ball drop quicker. So when you do this, you can actually swing even faster, hit harder, and the ball will stay in the court. Here's two slow-mo examples of that technique. And guys, if I missed any tips that have been helping you on your serve, make sure to comment them below. I'm curious to see what's been working for you guys. But if you wanna go deeper into the side spin serve, I made a video about that a few weeks ago, so make sure to go watch. Adding spin to your serve in pickleball is one of the easiest ways to make things more challenging for your opponents. So today, I'm gonna to take you through three different spins that you can use on your serve. Let me tell you, at the record,